Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Yo, I got Philly in the building. I got one of the most dangerous spitters to ever touch a microphone in the building. I got my man. Yo, many of y'all know him from MTV's Making a Band. But the new generation probably know him from destroying, destroying opponents in that rap battle league. Yo, please welcome my brother, E. Ness, to the building. Ness, what up? Press? What up, press? Appreciate you, salute, my guy. Appreciate salute, those salute. words, too. Appreciate that. Yo, Ness, you always was like, I, I don't need, you tell me, what is it about Philly? Like, Philly produces some of the illest spitters in the game. You got Beans. Everybody know Beans, Cassidy, uh, Freeway. It's so many just prolific spitters out of that one area. What is the water y'all drinking? <laughs> <laughs> um, Philly just always been rich in music. All we going back to the um, Gambling Huff, the sounds of, uh, you know what I mean, that shit, that whole thing. We just always had a rich... Uh, I would say a uh, 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 presence in music, and with that being said, it just, you know I mean, transcended over time into uh, hip hop and rap and creating rhymes. And uh, it's just, it's just a small Commonwealth city. It's not that big compared to a New York. So we kind of all on top of each other. Pause. In a way where you know what I mean, it's, it's it's so many MCs and so many artists, not enough outlets. So our our way of process of elimination and knowing who's who who should who deserve what is the battling process? That's the process where, you know, one rapper, another rapper, whoever wins, th that guy knows that guy's better than the other guy. So, and, and, and in hindsight, the guy that won would be getting all the looks because he 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 deemed he deemed himself better than another artist that said he he was the S H I T. Yo, it's crazy. So so has battle rap always been a huge part? of the Philly scene? Like, is, is this something y'all grew up with? Because, you know, rap has evolved over the years. I come no, from sure. the era growing up in the South Bronx, growing up in hip hop where you had to be a spitter. You had to be somebody who, like your pin game, it, it, it had to be pristine. No, for but, sure. Like um, back in my era, if you didn't have talent or you didn't have what we considered a pin game, you wasn't getting no looks. But now the climate has changed. Everybody is content creators and really they don't focus too much on the actual craft. And um, before, you know, I mean, my, my pre bad boy days, um, I was stuck inside this kind of zone where I just wrote enough, enough to people for people to say, OK, he's nice. But once I got the bad boy, I realized. One of the things Puff taught me, not, not to bring him in so early, was to write the beats that I didn't particularly write, like. And that strengthened my pen over the years. Also, um, Bad Boy's uh, of, of, of system of writing five verses per verse and then them picking the, the best verse out of those verses to, to insert inside, you know, verse one, verse two, verse three. So per song, I would write 15 verses. So everybody that's asking me, how can you remember your, your rhyme so quickly? I've been put through the Puff Daddy boot camp training for writing verses and, you know, listening to beats and what to listen for and what not to listen for. You know what I'm saying? Yo, first, first and foremost, I, I don't think people fully understand what it was like coming up in that system. I, I can speak from behind the scenes. Right. But you just spoke from the artist standpoint. I know behind right. the scenes... It, it was it was legitimately uh, you had to be a green beret, you had to be yeah. a Navy Seal, an Army Ranger to stand out in that system. But yeah. here you go from the artist standpoint, you like yo, and and a lot of things people didn't catch what you just said. Back in the days, it was three verses per song. These days, you lucky if you getting two verses. But for every verse, you had to write. For every verse, you had to write five different verses for it, and then they would pick the best one? Yes. Yes. Is so crazy. five verses for the first verse, five verses for the second verse, and five verses for the third verse. And then they would pick the best verses out of all those and insert them, verse one, verse two, verse three. 
That's how we got the song My Hood, my, the classic song My Hood. That's craziness. How, okay, notice, so let me notice ask you the this. verses on My Hood don't match the hook. It's because I wrote five of the alternate verses for every verse. And then they just picked the best ones that sonically sounded right. So how long does it take you, even back in them days, to write a verse? Like, you tell somebody right now, give me, give me 15 verses. They might come back to you next week. They're not coming back to you two hours right. later. Not, not only that, we was put under the Bobby Fischer clock, I would say. Anybody know anything about Bobby Fischer? He was a famous chess player. And when they play chess, they usually have a timer. So you hit the timer, and then that uh, that gives you know what I mean that that gives the other chance the, the opponent chance to think about his next move. But he's on a timer, and then he doesn't meet that time limit, then he misses his turn. So think about the time limit. Puff would come in the studio around ten o'clock, and then he would give us the beats to write to. So by the time the club is over, which the club is never over in New York because it's it's, it's all night long, he would come back from the club around two. And he wanted to listen to all 15 verses. So I really had like almost a four hour window to write 15 verses. Damn. And that went for all that all your bandmates? Yeah, all of us. They dreaded Damn. it. They dreaded it, but I knew that um in hindsight it was gonna make me stronger when it came to my pen. I always was a pure writer. Even if I don't write hip hop. I can still write R and B. I can write um, temporary music. I can write pop music. I can write uh, <clears throat> folk mu music. When you're a writer, you can write anything because you have an imagination. You're a creator. <clears throat> so not only that. Um, outside of that, I just want to establish myself as a pure writer, so people to know I can write to any beats per minute, any tempo, any type of beat, trap, down south, snap, hardcore, horrorcore. Uh, jiggy music with it per se, dance hall music. So um, what I would do was get, you know, back back in our day we had the Sycamore CDs. Remember DJ Sycamore? We would come out absolutely. With the CDs. They Shout had to all Sycamore. The instrumentals. He had all the instrumentals to whatever hot music was out at the time. What I would do in my own downtime was take the mixtape with all the instrumentals and write a sixteen to every beat. Whether I liked it or not, just to keep my sword sharp. So when Puff would call me to come write for him or, you know, or to do any type of thing where it would consider me writing, it would cut my time down. So I would be quicker instead of taking four hours to write 15 verses. Now I'm writing 15 verses within an hour and a half. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, Feel free to share. Peace and love. Make every move a power move. And I'll catch you all on the next video.